Okay, so once again, welcome to the Faculty of Philology of Linux University. And first of all, I would like to point out that our, our city and our university and our faculty, of course, is um, situated at the crossroads of cultures. So Lithuania itself and Vilnius itself is the center for political, economic, cultural, and intellectual significance between East and West. And of course, Vilnius uh, is a as a city is very special because Vilnius Old Town is included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. So if you join us and you study here at our faculty, you will be studying at the, in the heart of the Old Town. And another interesting thing is um, that uh, you'll be able to practice real communication with representatives of different cultures, Vilnius and Vilnius. Uh, first of all, perhaps a few words about Vilnius University. Maybe you have heard that Vilnius University is, of course, the best and the largest university in Lithuania, but it's uh, also one of the oldest in Eastern Europe. And um, it was, um, it was, uh, this day dates back to the 16th century because we have a lot of rich academic traditions. And so nowadays, as I mentioned, it's the best university in Lithuania because um, we are among uh, 400 best universities worldwide, according to the QS World University rankings in 2023. And um, as our faculty offers studies in uh, languages, linguistics, literature, and cultures, it is important to uh, mention that uh, we uh, rank among uh, 300 best universities in the field of linguistics. So our linguistic studies are really, really um, good quality. <clears throat> Well, coming back to the um, rich academic traditions and history, it is uh, important to mention that we have the oldest library in Lithuania here at the university um, in the central building where our faculty is as well. Um, but we also have a very modern and scholarly communication information center in another part of the city. Uh, where the students' dormitories are situated, um, and it is open around the clock, so day and night, and you can go and study there. Uh, it has the uh, most modern tools and it's available to students. Uh, I can also add that uh, we are a research university and um, a very comprehensive university, a university, a university that covers a lot of uh, study fields. So we have 15 faculties from philology to nanotechnology. And <clears throat> our campuses are situated in three cities. So the, 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 the biggest one is perhaps um, Vilnius and then Kaunas and um, Chile. As I mentioned, we're number one in the University of Lithuania. Um, we have uh, more than 23,000 students and uh, more than 3,000 professors, academic staff, and uh, the range of uh, programs is also very wide. We offer a lot of programs. For example, 98 bachelor's and integrated study programs, um, more than 100 master's study programs, of course, doctoral studies, and then res residency programs for for future doctors in the fields of medicine and dentistry. Uh, we are an international university, or we are trying to be an international university um, because uh, we are open to, to um, students from abroad, to international students who would like to study at our university and uh, get a degree here from Vilnius University. So, um, this year we are offering uh, 56 study programs in English. Um, and so uh, we have um, 2,500 international students here throughout all the faculties. I mean, not only the Faculty of Philology, but, but uh, the whole university. This makes about 10% of all students at our university. And of course, we, uh, we offer <clears throat> a lot of courses in English and other foreign languages, more than 1,000. So students um, who are uh, exchange students uh, here, mobility period, they, all, they can also profit from that uh, international context of our university and just study a lot of um, course units at our faculty and other faculties as well. Speaking about the Faculty of Philology, who are we? So we have um, about 1,900 students, um, with more bachelor students and uh, not so many master students. 
and uh, about 300 professors work here, teach here. They are researchers, they are scholars, researchers of language or literature, linguists, or some of them are very experienced teachers in the practice or translators, editors. And of course, we have native speakers, so professors um, who are native speakers of the language we teach in each of the study programs. Uh, what consists of our programs? Uh, we offer uh, more than 20 study programs at uh, the first site of the first cycle and second cycle, so bachelor programs and master programs. Of course, not all of them um, are open to international students because um, in some programs you have to, uh, to, to have Lithuanian language skills to be able to study. But uh, I will come to the, to the programs that we are offering that we offer it to the international students. And we are a very um, multilingual and multicultural faculty because 27 languages are taught here. So speaking about that languages, of course, uh, such languages as English, French, German, large <laughs> or very popular uh, Western European languages. Of course, Lithuanian language is, we are in Lithuania, but Lithuanian language is uh, taught as a national language then as um, a foreign language for international students, and of course, Lithuanian as sign language is another, another, uh, another interesting feature. Then we taught, uh, we teach, uh, we study the languages of our neighbors, like Latvian, Estonian, Polish, uh, of course, other languages, Slavic languages, Ukrainian, Russian, Croatian, Slovenian. Uh, then Romance languages like Spanish, Italian, Romanian, Latin, Ancient Greek, Modern Greek. And if you look up to the north, there is Scandinavia, Danish, Norwegian, Swedish, Finnish, Icelandic. And then uh, several languages that are not very popular, maybe, but interesting. Hungarian, Turkish, and Georgian. So if, uh, if you study at our faculty, you'll be able to learn one of those languages uh, in addition to your study field. Oh, we cover several study fields um, in humanities. So philology, philology is the um, most comprehensive one uh, study field. Um, that study field includes linguistics, uh, literature and culture of a specific language. Then we have programs in linguistics, we have programs in literary studies. So if someone is interested only in literature, then of course they study um, that, um, that field. Then classical studies in translation and interpreting. And now we're talking, we're going to talk about um, bachelor programs for full-time international students. We offer this year. So here you can see the list of study programs. Um, I will go through it uh, very shortly and then explain um, a little bit more what to expect. So the first program on the list is English philology. It is taught in English. So the um, very, 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 very uh, important requirement is uh, to um, have a good command of the English language. So a level BA according to the common European framework of reference is required. So an international certificate like EILTC, TOEFL or another international examination will do. So English B2 or higher is uh, good enough to enter the program. Then we have English in now foreign language, German. So it is also taught in English. So the same requirement applies in it applies here as well, English B2, but German is taught um, from the very beginning, from the ABC. Uh, German philology is offered to two target groups. For example, if you are proficient in German, you can uh, start uh, learning, um, studying uh, subjects in total German language. Uh, some general courses are offered in English or Russian. It depends on your native language or the language you speak as a first language. But for those who are complete beginners who haven't uh, haven't learned German at all, uh, we offer, of course, the opportunity to study German philology as well. Just start from the very beginning, from the ABC. Uh, and the language of instruction is English or Russian. And later on, and as we move on and uh, the students make progress, then we uh, switch to the German language. Uh, the same applies to two more um, programs, the so Polish philology. Uh, also, there are also two target groups, those who are already proficient in Polish or those who are complete beginners in Polish. So 
then then the, the program is taught in Russian and later on in Polish. A Russian philology as well. And uh, our new program on the list is Spanish philology. It is offered to complete beginners, so you don't have to speak Spanish in order to start this program. Uh, you have uh, only to, to know the English language to be able to follow the, the instructions in the first year. And then later on, uh, the teachers, the professors and students will, will uh, switch to the Spanish language. So English, English is now a foreign language, uh, German. These programs are a little bit similar. Uh, perhaps I could uh, point out the difference. So English philology, uh, as it is philology, so you can study not only the language itself, but of course linguistics, literature and culture. So wide range of, wide range of subjects. English is now foreign language. Um, it doesn't have the word philology. This means that um, it is concentrated. So the main focus is the language itself and linguistics. So less the literature, less cultural courses in the curriculum. That will be in short, and we'll come back to the list of programs. Uh, here you can see our, uh, our um, website, and you can visit our website and see the list of programs. You'll be sure to, 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 to click studies, then bachelor integrated studies, and then you'll see the study programs, the list of study programs um, I was talking about. Uh, on the same page, just at the bottom, you'll see application procedures. So if you're interested, there are just step, uh, step by step uh, explained all these procedures. And if you open one program that you're interested in, you'll see the description. And here you see the admissions contact. So um, if you have a question concerning the admissions procedures, so contact the, 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 the admissions, admissions office, admissions CRLC. But if you are interested um, in the course units are taught in that program, so in the curriculum, in the contents, what you're going to learn in that program, then you can uh, contact um, a, a teacher from that program. You'll see the academic contact as well. Well, uh, general information about the admissions, about the deadlines. And so the deadline is the 1st of June for applicants from non-European Union countries. Uh, and uh, the 1st of July for those uh, who don't need a national visa for arrival to Lithuania or um, for applicants uh, from countries uh, where there is a Lithuanian embassy. So those two deadlines are very important because if you apply in time, then you'll get a mediation letter in order to obtain the visa and so on. And now about our bachelor's curriculum. Curriculum, so the, the, context, uh, the contents of the study program, what you're going to study if you apply for a program here at our faculty. Uh, as I previously mentioned, uh, there are um, several uh, focuses on the focus, the focus is uh, threefold. Linguistics, literature and language itself. So you'll get essential knowledge and skills of linguistics and uh, you'll be able to analyze the specific language system, for example, English or Polish or German. I mean, the language <coughs> you're studying is the, 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 major, the major in your program. Then, of course, you'll be able to analyze uh, literature written in that language and, uh, of course, uh, develop uh, very good language skills to professional communication in that. Uh, language you study. Uh, if you study, uh, if you work, uh, if you're motivated, you'll be able to reach uh, level C1 um, according to the common European framework of reference in that language. And of course, there is um, culture. Culture applies to all those three focuses. So culture is everywhere. It is not uh, possible to imagine studying a language without uh, getting to know the culture of the people that speak that language. Uh, in the study program, you will have uh, an opportunity to, 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 to have internship and work placement. So there is um, the eighth semester at the end of your studies where you go somewhere to a company or uh, to a school or to an institution where you apply everything you learned in real life. 
And uh, uh, to be able to graduate from the university, you have to um, write and present a bachelor's thesis. It is just, uh, it, it, it deals with linguistics or literature research. So this is um, in short uh, what you're going to study. And we have um, up to 50% of the program students um, can choose themselves. So these are different elective courses. You know, there are compulsory courses that you have to study. And then there are lists of different options to choose from just like another foreign language uh, or just uh, some interesting aspects of linguistics or language, literature of culture. Uh, you can also choose a minor study program. I'll explain just a moment what that is. So uh, we always uh, say that our programs are very flexible. Flexible means that uh, you, are, you can choose up to half of the contents yourself. Just in your program, there are various aspects of linguistics, literature, culture. Uh, you will have to choose the topics for uh, various course, papers, projects, presentations, according to your interest. Of course, the topic of the BA thesis, and of course, type and place of internship and work placement. So some people go and try to teach the language they have studied, other, other translate. Then uh, there are um, such options as international communication, international, company so we just um, try to apply everything you've learned then uh, of course there are exchange opportunities um, you can spend up to 12 months abroad at a partner university so just some kind of mobility it's very important of course so if you study foreign languages and cultures and um, all those um, choice options they include, for example, another foreign language. So you can choose um, a foreign language from the list of those 27 languages I, I, I mentioned. You can also take uh, several general education models like philosophy, psychology, quality management, astronomy, linguistic diversity, language science, business at the crossroads of cultures, and, and so on. So the lists are very long. But if you are interested in uh, another study field very much, you can uh, choose the so-called minor studies. Uh, this is another um, program that will be indicated in your diploma next to the, the first program you have um, graduated from. For example, if you um, study uh, English um, philology, but you are very interested in business management. So instead of several optional courses, you can take minor studies. It's about uh, 20 uh, five percent of the scope of the program, and then your diploma will say um, Bachelor in Humanities uh, uh, and English Philology and Business Management. And of course, uh, you can choose just uh, courses from other programs that in other faculty that you are interested in. So uh, about uh, the opportunities to study abroad, uh, we have yeah very international and multilingual, multicultural faculty. That's why we have more than two hundred contracts with the best European universities. So for example, uh, in the second year of your studies, in the third year of your studies, you will be able just to apply for a mobility period and spend some time abroad at the partner university. You just uh, go for a semester or for two semesters there, you study there, um, then come back and just go on with your studies here. And there are also not only Erasmus Plus partners, uh, there are also other networks like Not Plus, Notlix, Arcus Alliance, uh, various agreements, other programs and funds. Okay, what will you learn at uh, our faculty? <clears throat> so what are the competences when you study uh, some philology? What, uh, what, what can you do after that? So you understand how language works. Uh, you, can, you are able to communicate effectively, just orally and in written form. You are able to 
analyze various texts from a professional point of view, of course. Uh, you develop an expert approach to literature and culture. Of course, so you are able to practice intercultural competence. You can uh, understand people from other cultures and you can mediate between them when they communicate, help them communicate with, with each other. And uh, as uh, we are talking about philology, so you just get a solid education in humanities, broad outlook, critical thinking, and open mind and quality. Uh, I don't know. Um, Agna, what do you think? Should I mention several um, topics uh, what the students uh, are um, writing about in the bachelor thesis? What do you think? I mean, sure, we can just look at some examples. Right? Okay, some, hmm? okay, for example, if you are interested in literature and culture, uh, you can choose, so the students, they choose a topic for the bachelor thesis themselves. For example, one of the students um, wrote uh, the bachelor thesis on uh, Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery, and uh, and then the series Anne with an E, that that film and that book, and analyze that in uh, in the um, bachelor thesis. As for example, literary masters in the novels uh, by Günter Grass and Patrick Zuskin. For example, there was um, a thesis on Soviet Lithuanian New Year's greeting cards. So how are they, what, were they special? What was so special about them? What was so peculiar about them as well? Then, for example, uh, the concept of family in Swedish and Lithuanian social studies textbooks for primary school. That is also interesting. So you see, the, 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 the range of topics is very wide. So you can choose um, what you are interested in. Uh, if you're interested in language and linguistics, uh, so you can also choose from a wide range of topics. For example, code switching in Lithuania, male and female influences on Instagram. So how they speak, yeah, uh, and uh, so you analyze samples of their language. Or for example, conceptual metaphors in public discourse on climate change, our planet's crying for help. Or um, of course, uh, they, would, they were, um, a lot of there was a lot of uh, bachelor thesis um, uh, written uh, written uh, on topics um, related to uh, COVID pandemic, uh, COVID nineteen pandemic. So analysis of travel blogs, for example. Okay, discourse of drugs in Lithuania and German press articles, discourse analysis, then impoliteness in the workplace, sociolinguistic analysis, and TV, TV show suits. So you can choose what you are interested in. And the last but not least is perhaps uh, what every student, a student asks about career opportunities. So where do all students work after they graduate from the university? Okay, there are such places like foreign missions in Lithuania or embassies, international organizations, translation agencies, publishing houses, editorial offices, cultural and educational institutions, the media, public relations organizations, business and service companies, uh, travel agencies, hotels, banks, logistics companies, freelance or self-employed work is, is also important. For example, you, um, you can uh, work as a freelancer, um, like a translator, editor, copywriter, publisher, language teacher, creative communication stuff as well. And why so many career opportunities? You know, knowledge and languages, why so many? Because you know, uh, when you study at the Faculty of Philology, when you study a language, a foreign language, when you study um, literature and culture, we we are not going to a specific narrow job. We are ready to work and study independently in any group. We learn, communicate, and cooperate in an intercultural, interdisciplinary field. Uh, our students uh, can analyze information very well. They can think critically and creatively. They can adapt to change to changes very fast, very quickly, and to respond to challenges, solve problems. So, for example, philologist doesn't 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 ask what to do, what to do. Oh, okay, we have a problem. Okay, now there are several options to solve the problem. Should we do this like this or like that? So we offer this solution, and of course we take responsibility for our work and strive for quality. Still, um, I don't know, Agnes, should I go on? Um, about on, on, on general information, what do you think? Is it interesting? Uh, yeah, well, you can just look at the slides, okay. I guess. 
this mm -hmm. is not about the studies, but just more additional information about university and living in Vilnius, I guess. So the cost of living is very important, of course, if you come from another country. So this, this is, for example, the price for the room in the dormitory, then food one person per month. 175 euros of just an average in the public transport. Um, I don't know, a cup of coffee costs two euro, cinema ticket seven euro. Okay, internet 15 uh, euro per month. By the way, we have one of the best internet access. Yeah, internet speed is very good. Okay, and then what kind of support does the university offer? Okay. Of course, we have academic advising and counseling. So if you have some questions, usually about studying, questions related to study opportunities, individual study plans, so you can talk to, 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 to people at the study office of the faculty you're studying. Um, so there are, there, are, there are different options. We have also career consult counseling. Uh, we have psychological support for those who need that. Um, uh, then there is um, a church here um, at the, um, at the at the university, uh, it was built together with the university. So, if if you want to attend the masters, you are you are so open. It is open, and um, you are welcome to do this. And of course, the university offers a lot of extracurricular activities like sports clubs, arts uh, groups. Uh, you can sing in a choir or just um, do sports. And of course. There are several uh, various workshops and other events. Okay, financial support. Our students, some of the students get um, incentive scholarship or social scholarships, just like, like some some help. And then, uh, if you are very bright students, uh, uh, you can get nominal scholarship for your research activities for academic achievements. Well, and I guess. Um, I guess um, perhaps that's all I wanted to say. So I think um, we can move on to the. Sorry, we can move on to the um, to the question and answers section. Or just so if you want to talk um, about a specific program, you see on that list English philology, English and other foreign language, German, German philology, Polish philology, Russian philology, Spanish philology. Just raise your hand and we'll try to answer your questions. You can ask your, your, your questions in English or you can ask, you can also ask your questions in Russian if you'd like to. Yes, and also if you don't want to speak, you can use the Q&A tab and uh, you can see I posted a message that you can ask us a question. So you can go and type the question if you have any questions. Um, we still have some time left. No questions. Yes, yeah, so okay, I think uh, we can wait just a couple of minutes. Of course. Yes, and if if you don't have any questions, then thank you for your attention. Diana, thank you for the extensive presentation. Thank you for being with us. OK. I can switch that off. Well, good to hear. So maybe consider joining our academic community. Maybe we'll meet in September on campus already, not, not somewhere in the internet like today. Any more questions? Uh -huh. Can I learn in Polish? Okay, yes, it is possible. 
so most people decide to learn that in Russian, but uh, we also offer that possibility. For example, if you're uh, motivated to learn the Polish language from the very beginning, just in English, we had, uh, we had some students who wanted to do that. Okay, it was, it was possible. But uh, perhaps I would um, advise, if you're interested in Polish phonology, I would advise just um, enter, just apply for another study program and then take Polish, uh, Polish language and culture as a minor study field. What do you think, Agne? Would it then be better? Yeah, so it really depends if you're interested in only Polish studies or in philology studies in general. Because you, if you are interested in philology studies in general, then you can, as Diana said, pick any other program and just pick Polish as your minor studies or just as a foreign language and you will learn Polish and earn those competences as well. So really consider what is your priority. And of course, we'll be able to spend a semester or two semesters abroad in, uh, in, in Poland, in Warsaw, for example, or in Krakow, for the best universities are. Okay, uh, any more questions? No questions, perhaps. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention, for your time. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you know, if you're interested in a specific study program, just go to the university's website, find the list of the study programs, and then contact whether the admissions office or that contact person who is indicated as an academic contact there. And okay, see you in September, perhaps. Yes. Yes, thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank you. Good luck with choosing your studies. Whatever you choose, uh, it is important to choose something that you're really interested in. Not because uh, nothing don't choose, uh, because your parents want you to study this or that. Choose what you are interested in. It's your future. So it's your career. Okay. So thank you very much and have have a nice evening or I don't know what time of day it is in your country, maybe morning or just day. So best regards from this year and from the leaves. Yes. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.